praying to the gods at the moment, hoping they get it done. Ohio State's going to be pitching all three of these cards. Wooster, uh, decent curve so far, but that power overwhelming and soul fire are going to get pitched away, and we're going to see if they can pick something else up. But so far, pretty decent uh, openings on both sides. Yeah, I think a lot of this game comes down to, you know, which deck curves out better. Um, yeah, a lot of times we, we've seen in the past that mid-range hunters can whip on their curve, and a lot of times in the past we've seen that Zoo Warlocks can also whip on their curve. So uh, a lot of times hunters can curve out well, piece together a lot of damage, and close out the game with burn, combined with like Unleash the Hounds, things of that nature. And sometimes Zoo Warlocks can just take a hold of the board and never let go, and hunters can't find a way back in it. Yeah. So it looks like both players, or both teams, are curving out reasonably well. Should have a pretty good fight in their hands. Yeah, what TJ's talking about mostly is that these decks thrive on those early game curves. When they have the strong openers, they can run away with games. But yeah. with both, when both sides are trying to do that, it turns into an all-out slugfest for the minion battle very early on. And when that's happening, it, the game can snowball very easily in one, on one side. <laughs> I remember in the past, people used to think, well, when both hero powers are damaging one player, the player that they're damaging are going to be in a lot of trouble. <laughs> When, when, we that, when we only had... That's a Moger the Ogre! Oh, they're, they're, look, they're giggling. They're like... Dang it! Chad, did you put this in our deck before we, we queued up? They're hiding their their faces. They actually look surprised. I think Chad... Someone put that Moger the Ogre in their deck prior to this. Oh, man. They've, they've been trolled. <laughs> Well, Huffer's going to troll a little bit here, too. How far away is Worcester from Ohio State? They're actually pretty <laughs> close to each other. It's a hop, skip, and a jump away. <laughs> oh, no man. way for Wooster to take care of this Huffer. It's getting in eight points of damage. Yeah, they're going to cash in on that Haunter Creeper. Stranglethorn Tiger. Uh, I actually like their card a lot in Midrange Hunter. Uh, it's like a guaranteed five damage that's going somewhere. If you have Houndmasters, it gives you a guaranteed Houndmaster target at some point in the game, so... The big story here is how much damage Ohio State can actually push, given their board position. Now, here's the thing. That 4-1 has a target on its forehead, and there's two 1-1s on the other side of the board. So if they decide to push damage instead, they leave themselves vulnerable to just value trades on Wooster's side. So because of that, do they decide to take a, a more defensive stance? You know, given that they have Stranglethorn Tiger, that they have Dr. Boom, that they have Eaglehorn Bow with a trap, I think a defensive play is, is in order right now. Yeah. But, I mean, it's always terrible, you know, trying to trade into Imp King bosses. It, it feels pretty bad because it's so hard to deal with those clean names. It's like a Harvest Golem. Yeah, but worse. Well, Captain's Parrot, uh, there are usually no pirates in uh, Hunter decks. This is no exception to that. And Wooster, meanwhile, Void Caller picked Ooh, up. That's that gives a really him a good lot pickup. of gas at the moment. Does Wooster disrespect the beast? They're making the right call here. If there was Houndmaster, you would have seen it last turn. Yeah. Uh, Ohio State does have a great way to follow this up, though. Eaglehorn Blow combined, Eaglehorn Bow combined with Freezing Trap. Uh, they can force that Void Caller to go into a Freezing Trap by uh, trading into the Spectral Spider. So, uh, a rather increased chance of it. I mean, New Ruby can still get buffed here, but that's true. Yeah. Here's the, the thing. Dire Wolf Alpha. Akin to the Houndmaster, I think they would have been likely to already see a buff happen. Yeah. If Wooster had access to it. So both of these guys making some pretty darn good reads on where they need to focus uh, their cards at the moment. And now that this is when Ohio State is going to turn on the heat and hope to shut Wooster out of the game. Wooster's going to need something to fight back against this because this is a lot of damage that's coming over the next three turns. Yeah, it definitely is. And Lothab's a start. It can, you know, stop some, some spells. But against Hunter, a lot of times uh, that's not too effective, especially going into turn six. You know that's Savannah High main. Is always something that you're looking out for. Yeah. They choose to not pop the freezing trap, and I like this. Uh, if they chose to go for it in this position, they were going to find themselves taking too much damage, losing that little bit of presence on the board. You know, they want to draw something to buff this Nerubian egg and take advantage of these bigger minions that they have sitting here already. So in the meantime, uh, they're going to hope that Ohio State just doesn't have a lot of strong plays to follow this up with. And unfortunately for them, they happen to have the best plays to follow it up with. Yeah. That's Dream Curve. Now, the one thing they are missing is utility. I mean, this hand is one direction. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. Savannah, I mean, I feel like it's automatic here. 
Well, th I just think they're considering, like, you know, maybe if they push and they, and they add the Stranglethorn Tiger, maybe that's a little bit better. You know, is weaving in the hero power at the pilot Shredder, is that something similar? I still think this is the right way to do it, and because the Savannah Hyman, now you have a two-pronged attack going on. Number one, you're chipping away at their life, and you have a big minion they have to take care of. And that's a terrifying situation. Soulfire, that's a dead card here. Yeah. Is Mogur the Ogre a dead card, though? This, oh, jeez! This is actually kind of a blessing in disguise at the moment, because... You know, say one of these attacks goes awry and it hits the Nerubian the egg Nerubian instead. Egg. Yeah. Oh my goodness gracious. It's being played. So here we go. Lothab going to take out the front half of this uh, Savannah High main. But that's a lot of damage they're staring down. Moger the Ogre is going to hope to do work. Moger hype! <laughs> I'm hyped. Just all the attacks go through perfectly. And yeah, he only like, disrupts oh, well. his own attacks. <laughs> <laughs> his attack goes into the 1-1. One, one. That's Hearthstone. That's Hearthstone. Ogre the Ogre, this guy's all of He's a really technical player, all about <laughs> nuance, strategy, precision. Maybe some scare tactics. Yeah. I don't think scare tactics work on Ogre. So, okay, let's not get to my personal life. I missed the line. I'm an idiot. <laughs> Ignore everything I said. Please don't tweet about it. <laughs> Oh, oh, no. Well, <laughs> right direction. Hey, I mean, you can literally just pour your stuff at anything because <laughs> there's an equal <laughs> chance that it'll go somewhere else. All right, that one landed. Oh, oh, oh yes. <laughs> what is going on? I have never seen this happen before in my entire life. Oh, oh no. no. Oh, disaster. Moger lives. Yes, it does. Dr. Boom's going to come down, though. They have a big game hunter in that zoo deck. Yeah, but... <laughs> oh, man. This is incredible. I've never seen anything like this. Today has been the greatest day of competitive hearts that I have ever seen. Yeah. I am in agreement. And Ohio State is very confused. This zoo deck has Moger the Ogre and big game hunter. Not, now, not, here's the thing. Moger can force himself to attack incorrectly. Yeah. Oh, no. Oh, no. Wow. Full four damage. They're even a soul fire. They want to trim as much damage as they can. Moger might have actually saved this game. I didn't think I'd ever say that. Yeah. Oh, I think... Uh, well, Hunter's Mark doesn't actually... <laughs> Doesn't actually attack anything. Oh, but here's the thing. No. There's a chance that they still don't kill Moger. Okay. Oh, okay. We're out of the water on that They one. got it. The gig's up. The jig is indeed up. So at this point, Ohio State, it's actually funny. They're fighting the attrition battle a little bit better. Uh, equal minion costs do not win Joust. So that is just a 3-2 at the moment. But they have Pilot Shredder to add behind this and a Hero Power. So the chipping away of health continues once again. Wooster's going to have to find a way to stave off this pressure. And with that hand, I'm not sure it's there. Yeah, and Ohio State, even with the 10 damage that they have staring out on board, if you account for the hero power, well, that is could actually be a big deal. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So here's the Wooster staring down. 10 damage at the moment. They have I, to survive this turn first. Yeah, I think they just have to take a risk here. They can't afford to do anything else. Ohio State's got minions to plow on the board. Not seeing the win here, TJ. Nah. Even with Mount Ganas coming down this next turn, which it will, plus the Doom Guard, both can come down. It's still, I just don't think it's going to be enough. With the Stranglethorn Tiger on the board, um, and <clears throat> they can even play the Pilot of Shredder here and be confident in. in um, them having enough damage to push through whatever okay. Wooster can throw I'm out. I'm thinking of a nightmare scenario here for Wooster, which is Void Collar runs in the Pilot Shredder, spawns a Doomsayer, and they get the Doom Guard running the other Pilot Shredder, and the whole board gets cleared. <laughs> they can't kill off the Void Collar now. That's that's true. They can't. Zero power minion. Wow, is this maybe enough to stay off another turn? It's not. Malganus no. is dying no matter what. Yeah. Yeah, they're Wooster gonna realize is it. Well fought played. valiantly, but Ohio State, with just enough pressure, is going to stay this uh, I think you go for the Ram Wrangler. Well, of course you go for the Ram Wrangler. <laughs> is, is this a question? Yeah. They're trying. Oh, here we go. Just if you can end it with please. a King Crush. Or a Silverback Patriot. Not quite. 
So Stranglethorn Tiger going to deliver that last five points of damage. And Ohio State has secured themselves a 4-0 record, which guarantees them a spot in the playoffs and a share of that $100,000. A, a, a shot at a share of that $100,000. That was a tongue twister. Yeah.